Hello and welcome back to Everard Junction. Today we're going to carry on working on this uh, street scene, this sort of town scene. The first thing I'm going to do is just start to add a little bit more detail um, as a bit of a continuation uh, from the previous video. Lots and lots of details to add to the street, many things uh, missing uh, and many things that uh, would certainly really bring the street to life. So we'll start to add a few of those little bits and pieces and it's pretty much going to be a never-ending process. There's always going to be stuff uh, that can be added but I've prepared a few things in advance so we'll get those installed and see how things look. So as you can see I've prepared a few bits and pieces in advance just giving it all a lick of paint making sure that it's all the right sort of colour and uh, now we can uh, start to install some of this on the street. So we've got some more of those uh, drain covers from Langley Models, which I've used previously. We'll try and use some of the different styles and sorts of uh, round drain covers and smaller sizes and stuff. So we'll complement the ones uh, did previously with those. We've also got some utility cabinets, uh, the classic British sort of green uh, street utility cabinets that you see on the street uh, up against the wall of various buildings and walls and under bridges and stuff like that. Uh, telephone boxes, post boxes, got some litter bins, and we've also got some hydrant markers and water and gas markers as well. The water and gas markers are from Scale Model Scenery. They're just a simple card kit. I've left them all on the sprue as you can see and just sprayed those up, uh, prepared those in advance. And these litter bins are also from Scale Model Scenery. Quite a fiddly little card kit to put together, but uh, I've prepared a couple of those and just painted them a sort of very dark grey and we'll add some weathering and litter around those once they're in position. The post boxes, street utility cabinets and the telephone boxes are made by a company called Model Railway Scenes. As you can see these items are 3D printed and the level of detail on those is uh, really quite something. That's one of the, uh, the imp really impressive things about resin 3D printing. So I've just given those a lick of paint in the appropriate colours and they'll need a little bit of weathering and toning down but uh, they're certainly ready to put into position. The street utility cabinets are very nice as well, lovely bit of detail just there. And I've got a few other packs and bits and pieces uh, that I bought as part of the same order uh, downstairs so you'll see those uh, be added to the layout over the next few months I'm sure. So I'll go ahead and start to put those bits and pieces into position using the uh, buildings here for context, I'll leave all the buildings in their position uh, just so I know where edges of buildings and things uh, reside and I put these bits and pieces in the right place. First thing I'm going to do just before we get started is put some glazing into the phone boxes. You see it look a bit strange uh, without any glazing in there. Now you could cut some pieces of plastic and sort of try and fit them inside and glue them to the back of the window frames, but it's going to be a little bit tricky. So instead I'm going to use some of the deluxe materials glue and glaze. I use this for installing all of the windows in the various buildings and if I'm doing any uh, glazing to locomotives and rolling stock because it dries crystal clear and it doesn't uh, fog up clear plastic. It doesn't cause any damage to clear plastic. Now the windows in this uh, telephone box are so small we should just be able to use the glue and glaze itself with no additional plastic to create the windows we need. So I'm just going to use a small paintbrush and apply the glue directly uh, to the windows on the telephone box. So I'll leave the glue to dry, it will eventually dry completely clear and then uh, we can place the telephone boxes into position. While I wait for the glue to dry I shall go ahead and install some of the other bits and pieces onto the street.
So I've added a number of little details, drains underneath the drain pipes where they're visible, the bins of course, and a few markers for water, electric, gas, various utilities. You can see the uh, green utility cabinets there. Two post boxes, lots of those etched um, covers, drain covers for various utilities, hydrant markers, things like that. Lots of little bits and pieces. Some of it needs a little bit of weathering, a bit of dry brushing, just to bed things in. We've also put some drains into the street. You can see one just over there, just very carefully cuts the plastic around the uh, perimeter of the drain and just removed that from the surface. Painted the underlying uh, foam, just a sort of dark gray or almost a black uh, color, and then just popped the drains back into position. And then we've got a few more cabinets and utilities over this side as well. There you can see some more drains over on this side of the street. There's another one just over there. So you can see how those small little bits and pieces just add a little bit more life to the street. There's still a lot to do, so I'll go ahead and prepare some more bits and pieces. The telephone boxes have almost dried and you can see the sort of uh, glazing effect as a result of applying that glue. So they're now ready to be installed and it certainly just looks a little bit better uh, than just you know leaving them as is uh, with a load of broken windows. Although that uh, could be quite authentic depending on the area you're trying to model. So while I've been waiting for the phone boxes to dry I've just made a few more bits and pieces. So I've got uh, some scale model scenery uh, kits and sheets out and you can see we've got some signs there for some of the industrial units, a couple of uh, to let and uh, for sale signs for a couple of the houses there. Simple bus stop and I've also uh, got a few scraps together and put together a, a sort of uh, an advertising billboard uh, which is the first of many I hope to have in the station and various other urban sections of the layout. I found the image online and just uh, printed it out and cut it uh, to the uh, sort of shape um, that I was after. Uh, this particular ad is actually out of a magazine so there was originally quite a lot of uh, text on the top of the image that you uh, often get with the sort of magazine uh, advert. So I've cropped it back to just the sort of image of the uh, the 205s there um, with obviously the Peugeot logo and the name of it. Uh, something a little bit more simple that you would perhaps have seen on a large advertising billboard like this one. Okay, so I've just placed a uh, girder just across the pavement there, just to hold this in the right place. Okay, there we have it. Uh, still need to finish the pavement off, obviously, just to tuck underneath the, uh, the recess section of the arch just there. But uh, I'm quite happy with how that looks. And then I'll go ahead and install one of the phone boxes. We're starting to get a nice bit of detail there now. We've got a uh, street utility cabinet, a drain, a drain pipe, phone box, advertising, and a litter bin. Uh, with the building here that's going to go in front, uh, that should look quite busy. Okay, so the details are starting to come together now. Quite pleased with all those little bits and pieces. Little bits of signage and things, and you just sort of pick it out as you look around the scene. And I've also got those for sale signs installed on the houses. There's one of them just there. And then we've got another one a little bit further down the street. 
So I'll go around and do a little bit of subtle uh, dry brushing, weathering and toning down to some of these bits and pieces. You can see this sign, it's got a little bit of weathering printed onto it, but in comparison to the rest of the scene, it uh, somewhat stands out and looks rather pristine. So we'll tone that down. And the same applies to a few other bits and pieces. I've also installed the bus stop, just popped it on the other side of the road just there. And I've got some very small uh, bus shelters from scale model scenery, so I might put one of those together and see if it fits in the scene. So I'm back over here at the canal section and uh, in the previous video we discussed that we're going to add a little bit of grass and stuff to the edge of the canal piling here, which is why I've stopped the uh, paving slabs just short, uh, which is similar to an area I'm trying to copy that I saw on the Grand Union and Milton Keynes. And we'll also add a little bit of uh, grass or moss in a couple of places in the uh, gaps between the various slabs. Not everywhere and only small amounts, but uh, it is all quite pristine and sort of nice and convenient at the moment. There, should, there would have been uh, you know, bits of grass and stuff growing through in a few places, most certainly. So we'll try and portray some of that. While the glue is still wet, I'm just going to encourage the grass to stand up a little straighter at the edges so it doesn't overhang into the canal. It should look a little bit strange. Okay, I'll clean up the excess and then I'll apply a few more spots in a slightly lighter shade of green just to add some variation. Okay, there we are. That's the sort of thing I was after. You can see the different colours in there. And there's also two different uh, heights of grass, so 4.5 and 6.5 millimetres of the two different sizes. And you can see these sort of varying tones of green and then a more sort of a more of a burnt uh, summer sort of grass. But uh, added a few bits of green in there as it is uh, right next to a water source. So this grass will, for the most part, be healthy. So now I'll add a little bit to the pavement. I'm just going to use some very fine scatter and a very small brush just to apply a small amount of white glue in the uh, joints uh, for the paving slabs and only in a few select places. We'll sprinkle a bit of scatter and see how it looks.
there we go sort of thing we're aiming for nothing too crazy and I'll do a few other bits as well elsewhere on other sections of the pathway but certainly by the canal there'll be a fair bit of uh, growth okay so there we go you don't initially notice it it's quite hard to pick out but you can see various bits of moss and foliage there and then it increases in intensity as it moves over to the canal so I'll go ahead and do a similar thing over on the rest of the town scene in a few select places uh, paying attention obviously if there's like a drain or something we put put a little bit more around there but uh, something similar to what you can see on the right hand pathway where the post box is we don't want to go too crazy and overdo the effect but it's also a nice effect it looks quite good um, once it's all dried there'll be a little bit of excess just to brush off just there and then that completes most of the uh, greenery and it will just uh, blend things in and make the uh, make the urban environment look that little bit more established so next i'm just going to add a little bit more litter and waste there's a couple of bits over here quite effective so i'll add a few bits of those in and i've got some cut out and ready to go a couple of people in the comments on a few videos back said about having uh, fizzy drink cans um, as part of the waste and i've previously had a go at it and dismissed it because it's just so small but it did get me thinking and i thought maybe try try and have another go um, a drinks can in this scale is going to be about half to one third the size of a grain of rice but I did have some plastic rod in stock so I sprayed it red and then cut them into sections and painted the ends silver and uh, it's a bit crazy because they are absolutely tiny but I think a couple will certainly make the area look a bit more interesting and it'll be one of those things that you don't notice until you've looked at the scene for a little while. In addition to the litter, I've just picked at this fence and removed a couple of bits and done a little bit of damage to it as it was uh, rather sort of brand new and pristine looking given what I'm trying to create in this uh, particular area. A little bit of distress on the fence I think was needed so I've just picked at it with a knife and just done a little bit of damage to it. So I'm going to leave the street detail there, uh, still lots to do but it's certainly looking a little bit more lived in, a little bit more established and there's, as I say, there's plenty to do, more weathering effects and bits and pieces. I have weathered the signs on the industrial units 
just a small amount of weathering powder just to blend those in. I might even take that a little bit further. That certainly looks uh, a little bit more in keeping with the scene we have there now. There's also the all important street lamps, of course, uh, possible interior to the buildings, uh, building lighting would be nice in future, detailing work to the girder bridge, detailing work to underneath the bridge, and I've also got to complete this small office building over here in the corner, and also complete some sort of building or structure or open ground or something that's going to go in this section here next to the one-way street. So now I'm actually going to turn my attention to the, uh, the main focus and that is to get these houses a little bit further towards completion. As you can see, I've put the doors in. Uh, that's a scale model scenery kit. Uh, I designed these buildings around that particular kit because it has a nice archway and a window there above the door. I thought that was quite a nice feature. And being a sort of older house, more a Victorian style house, uh, a lot of the houses I've looked at in the areas I'm taking inspiration from all have a, a bit more of a feature uh, when it comes to a front door. They have something a little bit like this. So for them all to be the same is perfectly realistic. So I'm going to leave things there for the purpose stick. Obviously far too clean and tidy, we'll tone those down. Still a lot to do, we're still missing road signs, we're still missing road names and numerous other small details and bits and pieces. So as there are so many of these houses, I've taken the opportunity to uh, take these downstairs and work on them quietly in my own time, come up with a design that I'm happy with and you can just see there we go, that's the sort of thing I'm going for. It is taking a while to create, but I am quite pleased with it, and it does uh, follow on from the uh, the idea of the real building. Uh, there's certainly some broad similarities there uh, with the real houses. Now I've made a decent start on the roof detail for those houses. I'll go away and get the rest of that completed and obviously film the process and show you along in the next video. But that is going to take me quite a while. It was a good eight hours worth of work just to do those two properties just there. And the chimney is quite a little bit of a, a fiddly bugger as well. So uh, that's going to take ages. I was too ambitious, you know, there's far too many houses, but it will be worth it in the end. So I'll leave it there, and as always, thank you very much for watching if you did get this far. It is certainly very nice having a little bit more free time in my life these days to actually make a bit more serious progress on the layout, which is also allowing me to make videos a little bit more regularly than I used to. And it's certainly very refreshing, very relaxing, and a long time coming. I've been really wanting to crack on with this layout for such a long time and you know, progress has just taken so long in some cases. So I've got years of work ahead of me, but it's nice to actually have something to look at now when I run the trains. So as I said, I will go away and busy myself with those houses and I'll be back as soon as I can once I've made some progress on those. And then we'll move on to other bits and pieces. As I say, years of work ahead, lots and lots to do.